Behind me is the St. Mary's River. It is part of the Potomac River drainage. Approximately eight miles of the river is tidal. The watershed is approximately 46,000 acres. It's the largest watershed within St. Mary's County and located in southern Maryland. In the early 80s, it was, the oysters were heavily exploited by um, uh, fishermen. And, and this was coincident with uh, deteriorating water quality where water in the bottom part of the river is completely lacking oxygen during the summer months. It makes it extremely problematic to the oysters and their well-being. And also disease, MSX and Dermo. There have been some attempts by Department of Natural Resources to reseed the bottom to actually take natural oyster beds and then dump shell uh, on those reefs to uh, enable the settlement of, uh, of oysters, but they haven't taken very well and this is, could be because of sedimentation and smothering of the oysters by sediments and other, other activities that make the bottom soft. There are two real project goals. First was that uh, we wanted to assess the filtering capabilities of oysters in floats and what we wanted to do there was to check the filtering ability of live oysters in floats versus just dead shell, uh, non-living shell in floats, just to see because we felt that there were, uh, we needed a control environment. We could take dead shell. Dead shell will filter because of the oyster community that lives on the, the filtering organisms that live on the shell. And so we wanted to do a comparison. We did that uh, at Piney Point at Chesapeake Bay Field Lab. And the other aspect of the project was to look at um, oyster community development, the organisms that live in association with the oyster shell, and to determine whether um, the community, the biological community that builds up, is um, uh, similar to that that you would find on the bottom, and whether live shell versus dead shell makes a difference in, the, in terms of the organisms that uh, come to live in the oyster community. We deployed the shells in October of 2006, replenished them in the spring of 2007, and then finally uh, did the assessments in the summer of 2007 and into the fall of 2007. And uh, basically what we found, we found some very interesting results. Um, the, it seems like the uh, bio, biological community that develops in the floating oyster shell bags is quite similar to the oyster community, the, the organisms that live with the oysters that you would typically find on the bottom. I'm not sure that this has ever been really assessed before, the actual float environment to determine whether there are um, whether the organisms that are living in the floats are actually the same as those in the bottom, but that certainly appears to be the case that, that it, there's a good healthy community of organisms that develop around the floats. There's not really much of a difference, not a significant difference between the living shell and the dead shell in the floats. Uh, what seems to be the case is that uh, just the habitat in the um, in the floats and in the shell bags is sufficient to attract the organisms and to form a healthy biological community. Up in the water column in the floats you have or the oysters that are performing their function without the conditions, problems that are existing on the bottom. Uh, it's a controlled environment for them. I mean, they're, they're, it's an aquaculture, um, an aquaculture kind of um, situation. But the organisms, the oysters did quite well on that. And uh, the oysters that we used were selectively bred to grow quickly. And indeed, uh, they, they filter very well, actually. We've shown the efficacy of using oyster floats to develop a biological community. We did not directly uh, test the ability of these oysters to 
clarify the water in the open St. Mary's River. That's very difficult to do. But we did show that they reduce sediments and algae in a controlled environment better than the, the dead shells do. So clearly there's a role of these floats in helping water quality uh, conditions. Now, if there are more floats, obviously the more floats there are, the better the water quality will be because of uh, the ability of these oysters to filter tremendous amounts of water. I think initially at docks this uh, could be dramatic. I mean the uh, water quality improvement could be dramatic. Now cleaning the entire St. Mary's River is, is, would, would be a difficult chore, but I think that uh, placement of these floats at individual dock owners, docks and elsewhere public areas would, uh, would certainly help the water quality situation.